Hello everyone, Laura K. Buzz here, and today we're going to talk about how to speedrun Cook and Mama Cookstar. This is a series that might only ever be one episode, but I'm doing a little series about how to speedrun games that absolutely nobody is speedrunning. I mean, for Cook and Mama Cookstar, there's three people currently actively speedrunning it, but if you want to get into speedrunning a game that, like, no one is speedrunning and therefore by default you could probably get a top four time even if you get a really terrible time, this is the series for you. So a bit of context, as of about four weeks ago only four people had ever tried speedrunning Cooking Mama Cookstar. Now yes, this is that Cooking Mama game that got pulled off the eShop on the Switch back in like March last year, let's get some things out of the way. The game never used your Switch for Bitcoin mining, it's not going to melt your Switch the second you turn it on, and because the game's bad, you can buy a physical copy pretty cheap at this point. Like, when that game originally got pulled off the eShop, physical copies got a bit expensive because people thought they'd be collector's items, but then people realised the game was kind of shit, so you can just like go buy this game. It's not particularly noteworthy per se, it's just kind of a crappy game with inconsistent controls that don't really register right. That's why only four people in probably nine months ever bothered to try and speedrun it. About two weeks ago, I decided to take every single record on that, that board that hadn't yet been taken, and then to go after the records that have been taken, and as of recording this video, I hold all eight of the possible speedrunning records for this game. I have two active challenges at the moment that I'm going back and forth with who they'll take my score, I take theirs, but I wanted to tell you how you can speedrun this game. I want to teach you about speedrunning and cook a mama cook star, so that if you decide, you know, I've got some money burning a hole in my pocket and I want to be a speedrunner with a top five in the world score, or, you know, even come for the top spot. My top spot's not that hard to beat. Here's how you speedrun cook and mama cook star. So first of all, once you've got a copy of the game, you need to check that you are updated to version 1.0.2. It gets rid of a couple of time-saving bugs and glitches, which does suck a little bit, but it's also the only version of the game that everyone can guarantee access to, so it's become the community standard in the rules. You can check that you're on version 1.0.2 by holding down the screenshot button on your Switch to capture a video, something that's only possible on this version of the game. There are eight categories to speedrunning Cooking Mama Cook Star, which are split up into traditional and vegetarian categories for either all recipes, five recipes, ten recipes, or twenty recipes. The smaller categories where you only do a set number are about finding the fastest specific recipes to do, and that's going to be up to your own experimentation, but a general rule of thumb is if you can complete a recipe in two and a half to three minutes, it might be a good candidate for these categories. The traditional and vegetarian categories are mostly identical to each other, with a couple of meat-based steps swapped out for meat alternatives. Generally, the vegetarian categories seem to feature some slightly shorter recipe times. Usually, preparing the fake meat alternative is quicker than preparing the actual meat. I'm going to focus today on the All Recipes category, as this is going to let me tell you about as many time-saving skips as possible. So, first choice you're going to have to make. Do you want to play this game with motion controls, or with sticks and buttons? Now, the answer to this one is obvious, I'm just going to tell you now. Use traditional stick and button controls. Motion controls are silly fun, but they are unreliable as hell. I shaved 25 minutes off my personal best, just by switching to traditional non-motion controls. Then, you have to decide, do you want to use a Joy-Con or a Pro Controller? Both of these controllers have their merits and their downsides. Pro Controller analog sticks have a lot more travel distance, so they're great for subtle mini-games such as grating cheese or breaking an egg, or peeling the outside off of a lettuce. But they're bad for repetitive mini-games such as chopping vegetables. Conversely, Joy-Cons are prone to drifting and that might be a barrier to you using them, but their short travel distance on the analogue sticks and easy to hold shape make it much easier to execute fast, accurate slicing motions when cutting vegetables, which you're going to do a lot during a full run. On the Joy-Con, I recommend cutting by bouncing your finger between the B button and the analogue stick quite forcefully. It's up to your personal preference, but you'll want to decide on one of these controller types early on and get as good as you can with it. 
With those decisions made, we're nearly ready to start speedrunning. All of the categories for Cooking Mama Cookstar are any percent categories, meaning that so long as you start the recipe and see your rating at the end, you can move on to the next recipe. A big part of speedrunning this game is discovering which minigames can be deliberately failed to save time, and which ones you need to complete accurately and properly to progress on from. Anything above a 0% across the recipe is a pass, so as long as you get something right at some point you can fail most of the recipe. The All Recipes categories require doing every single recipe, so I'm going to try my best to summarise all currently known major time-saving skips on the Vegetarian All Recipes run to give a sense of where you can save time. I'll also highlight known RNG moments which may trip you up. The traditional category is largely the same, there's no major skips that exist in one and not the other. Several minigames throughout the run, such as adding colourful food dye to cheese in the first recipe, will always have exactly three decoy ingredients placed in front of you. These appear at random, but once all three have appeared, you can speedrun the section without fear. On lots of spreading things minigames, you can position your analogue pointer on the edge of two rows and spread on both rows at once if you are precise. At the start of the run, on the rainbow grilled cheese, you can deliberately push the grilled cheese into the pan to burn it, skipping that section of the recipe. The same applies to a lot of fry this in a dry pan minigames. At the end of every recipe, you can save time by mostly skipping the results screen. Hit the A button once in the final photography step, then press X to skip applying Instagram filters, then B to skip seeing social media rankings for your meal. Any minigames involving leaving food in a steamer, oven, or freezer can be largely skipped by placing the food in and taking it out immediately. It doesn't matter that it's undercooked or not frozen yet, you're fine. That said, air fryers are a little more tricky to skip, as are bubbling pots of liquid, and any frying pan segments without the ability to press down the food and automatically burn it. On these, you'll need to simply deliberately fail any instructions given. Leave food in the air fryer when you're told to take it out, don't stir your broth, deliberately fail three steps as fast as possible to continue. For any stages where you are meant to roll dough into a ball and then flatten it into a set shape, you don't get penalised for smashing it into the counter and splattering it into oblivion, so go as fast as you like. When asked to add ingredients in the correct order to a mixing bowl from a selection of smaller bowls, just do an incorrect ingredient three times in a row to get through the segment as fast as possible. The order the game wants the ingredients is randomised, so be careful to not accidentally put the correct ingredient in by mistake. It may be worth waiting a moment to see that the top left ingredient is not the one being asked for before mashing it for three failures. For a lot of minigames, such as stirring liquids, grinding materials, or opening tin cans, Mama will shout at you if you go, too fast! While you will be penalised for exceeding certain maximum speeds, the ideal way to complete these missions is to walk that line very carefully. You want Mama to be constantly shouting at you that you're going too fast, without going so too fast that she actually penalises you. Get her shouting at you, and then don't go any faster, keep that speed perfectly. For the catch ingredients falling from the sky segments, a set number of ingredients will always fall, and you don't get through the minigame faster for catching them. Use this as a moment to have a breather, have a drink, compose yourself. These are free time in the three and a half hour All Recipes run to look after your needs as a human being. When breaking eggs, you can slightly preempt when the game actually shows you the egg. Going slightly ahead of the game lets you crack the next egg slightly faster, you just do the input a tiny bit before the egg appears. For the food mixer, the time it takes to switch to just the green light so that you can progress is randomised. There's nothing you can do about this. If you're doing a smaller number of recipes run, Either avoid these recipes because of the RNG, or put them early on in your run in case you get bad RNG and need to start the run over. When asked to put stir-fry ingredients into a pan, just mash all four face buttons over and over, finishing the minigame without cooking any of them, that's the best way to do that. With the big boiling pot of water, deliberately overboil the water as fast as possible by heading all the way to the right to skip much of the minigame. On the blender minigame, so long as you are quick at putting the lid down and returning to blending, you barely lose any time in the process. 
you're better off pushing the lid down more often than risking the delay caused by letting it get too high. For the measuring quantities memory game, the quantities will always be identical, so you can memorise these to save time. For any spreading minigames involving multiple layers, you need to move off of the invisible trigger and back on to trigger it a second time. So don't stick on the spot and do small movements trying to get it to activate again, move away from the spot and back onto it. The same goes for onion peeling. Anytime you are given ingredients in a strainer and told to gently shake them under the tap to wash them, spin your analogue stick as fast as possible to throw the ingredients out the bowl and skip the segment. The same goes for shaking things like salad dressing over salad, just throw it out the bowl. Anytime you're asked to shake powder over a meal, spin the controller in circles to throw the shaker away. Same for shaking up things like the bubble tea mixture at the end, just shake it up and throw it away. When cooking kebabs on a grill, keep an eye on how many you're being asked to make. You can often skip making a couple on the final step to save time, as more will be on the grill than need to be served up. Any minigames where you are tasked with throwing ingredients from a distance onto a target, that target usually moves fast and the penalties for missing are steep. You'll do better playing more cautiously. Don't try and squeeze in that extra one or two throws, it's rarely worth the risk considering the penalty you get. For the minigame where you need to drain a pot into a strainer, getting the ingredients in the strainer, just play the minigame correctly. You could maybe save time by going full blast pouring all the water out at once and sort of restraining yourself back just before the ingredient falls out, but it's an easy minigame to fuck up, and if you fuck up more than once or twice you just have to ride out the clock. Play it cautiously and you'll usually save time, despite the urge to pour the water out and just sort of wait the timer out. Spinning pizza on your finger to throw up and catch? Don't be cautious. Spin right up into that red bar and throw your pizza up onto the ceiling out of view for a 30 second time skip. When using the blowtorch on the baked Alaska, you have to crisp all three regions on each side evenly. Find the centre point these three regions meet, and then do small circles between the three regions around the centre point. When mixing ingredients like agar in a bowl, be cautious, as going too fast will cause Mama to throw out the entire bowl and force you to restart. These can cost you big time in a run. When basting, or icing, or basically painting a tough to see coating onto a meal, be methodical. The biggest time killer here is not being able to properly see where the missing section is you have not coated. The game often does not make that particularly clear. And that's most of the basics you need to know to get into speedrunning Cooker Mama Cookstar. Beyond that, it's just practice stringing minigames together, starting to memorise steps, and working out where your particular strengths and weaknesses lie. Currently, when I record this, there's only three people actively speedrunning this game, so it would be really easy for you to come get a record. If you've ever wanted to try speedrunning and want to get involved in a really lovely little active community that is very few people, but is very supportive, come come join us, come speedrun the game. All of us are really lovely, we congratulate each other on beating each other's scores. If one of us discovers a new time skip, we'll tell everyone about it. We give each other advice. We just we want to we want to see each other do better. So, yeah, maybe 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 check that out. It'd be, be chill time.